Hey class, Adam Ward here. I'm going to work through this activated sludge design for Bloomington, Indiana with you all. Uh, as you can see on the screen, we've got lots of given information here. Uh, so information about the population and the BOD that we are producing. Um, that's our load, um, a permit that allows us to discharge about 20 milligrams per liter. Um, bracketed in purple are all a variety of indices that you'd either get from a laboratory study or you would use typical values from a design manual. Um, and then down <coughs> bracketed in blue are design guidance, so a safety factor on the mean cell residence time um, and the mixed liquor volatile suspended solids concentration or the amount of biomass that we want to have in our aeration basin. And so at the bottom you can see um, a whole host of the design parameters that we'll calculate in the subsequent slides. So sketching out um, what's going to happen here, first with discharge inflow of 1,609 cubic meters per day, um, we've got outflow um, in the form of the effluent in the top right, in the form of the water that's going to be wasted, QW, and in the water that's going to be recycled, QR. Uh, similarly, um, we know for BOD, we've got an inflowing concentration of 200 grams per cubic meter, and we're permitted to have 20 leave. And we've got some concentration of biomass in the aeration basin, X, and some concentration in the sludge that's going to be returned, XR, R for return flow. Okay, so um, starting through the design process, the first thing that we'll want to do is identify the minimum mean cell residence time. And you'll recall that this occurs when microbial growth is perfectly balanced with microbial outflow from the system. Uh, and the design equation we have is here, uh, one over that mean cell residence time equal to the yield uh, multiplied by a variety of the other parameters. And we've got that microbial death rate, KD, um, subtracted. And so we can go ahead and plug in values that were given. Um, yield of 0.6 grams of volatile suspended solids per gram of BOD. Up in the numerator, I've got 5 times 200. In the denominator, we've got that half saturation constant 60 plus the inflowing concentration of 200 grams of BOD per cubic meter and then minus that endogenous decay rate or death rate of 0.06 per day. Uh, and when we go ahead and solve this out, we get a minimum mean cell residence time of about 0.44 days. And using our design safety factor of six, um, we can go ahead and multiply that by six and get a value of 2.64 days as the mean cell residence time that we'll design for in this problem. All right, next we can think about the aeration basin volume. And what you've got here is the food to microorganism ratio. Um, and that's got a volume in it, but in order to be able to solve this equation, we need to get that food to microorganism ratio. We're going to get it from the equation I've listed here in green. So we can go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, plug in a variety of known values. So one over our design mean cell residence time equal to the yield multiplied by that unknown food to microorganism ratio. We've got the difference in BOD concentrations from the influent to the effluent, divide by the effluent concentration, and we've got that endogenous decay rate or death rate. We can solve that out for a food to microorganism ratio of 0.081. Okay, so back up to where we started, 0.081 is equal to the inflowing BOD concentration times the discharge divided by the volume multiplied by the concentration of volatile suspended solids we'll have in the aeration basin. A little bit of algebra and we get a volume of 1,324 cubic meters. Uh, the next question was to find the biomass concentration in the return flow. Uh, in other words, in that secondary clarifier, when everything settles to the bottom and we're pumping that sludge out to return it, what will be the biomass concentration in that, in that sludge that we're returning? Um, that's 1 divided by the sludge volume index. That's an empirically determined term. 
we were given that in this case. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do some unit conversions to turn this into grams of volatile suspended solids per cubic meter. And you'll notice it's in milliliters up above. Um, so just a handful of conversion factors in there um, to get us from grams per mil to grams per cubic meter. All right, so the next question is um, about the return flow rate. So both how much is it, QR, and what fraction of the flow through the system will be recycled, capital R. And we'll solve for that capital R first. And we've got an equation here that relates the mean cell residence time, theta C, to the hydraulic residence time in the numerator, um, and then down in the denominator, one plus that percent minus that percent multiplied by the ratio uh, between the volatile suspended solids concentration in the return flow, XR, versus that in the aeration basin, X. And we've got everything except for R, so we can go ahead and plug these values in. And when we go, when we solve that out, we get an R of about 0 0.20. In other words, 20% of the inflow will be recycled. So this is not an inconsequential amount of discharge. If you actually want the volumetric flow rate, well, we can just go to the definition of what that R would be. And we can find that 20% of the inflow represents about 322 cubic meters per day. So a pretty substantial amount of discharge being cycled back through the system. Sludge production rate. Uh, so this is going to be pretty important for us. This is going to let us know how much sludge or how much um, how much of that biomass is going to be settling in the secondary clarifier every day. Uh, and that's going to determine how we have to deal with that in subsequent steps, which we'll review in the future in this class. So sludge production rate PX uh, is a function of discharge, yield, and the BOD removed in the numerator. Uh, and then one plus that mean cell residence time multiplied by the death rate or endogenous decay rate in the denominator. So we've got every term that we need here. Um, we can go ahead and plug in the flow, the yield, those two BOD concentrations up in the numerator, and then the denominator one plus 2.64, our mean cell residence time, multiplied by the death rate. And when we do so, uh, we find that we're producing about 150,000 grams of volatile suspended solids per day, or about 150 kilograms per day. So that is helpful to us because that lets us know the amount of sludge that we're going to be producing and the next, some, not the next steps, some related steps in our wastewater treatment plant will be to process that volatile suspended solids. So the output or the waste from this step is becoming the inflow, and the inflow to the next step in our system. <coughs> now, um, we know how much sludge we're going to produce that has assumed that the biomass would be able to process that BOD. And so what we're going to do on this slide is confirm that there's enough nitrogen and phosphorus present in our wastewater. So everything we've done so far has been about BOD, really about organic matter expressed as the equivalent amount of oxygen that gets consumed. Uh, just to make sure that we're not inhibiting growth in any way, um, we just use an empirical estimate here. And these are based on stoichiometry and typical nutrient ratios that we find in these microorganisms. Uh, the short of it is the amount of nitrogen we need N can be calculated as 0.122 multiplied by that sludge production rate. That's an easy calculation. We find that we'll need about 18.3 kilograms of nitrogen per day. That's going to be accessible to those uh, microbes. Now, that's fine, uh, but how do we know if we have it? An easy thing to do here is to turn this into a concentration and ask, what concentration of nitrogen would we need coming in? So you can see what I've done is put the mass rate we need on the top, or in the numerator, 18.3. And in the denominator, I've put the flow rate. So uh, go ahead and um, you can see I'm using a conversion from kilograms to grams. And I go ahead and calculate that we need about 11.4 grams of nitrogen per cubic meter of wastewater. So this is a handy calculation because we can monitor those concentrations in real time or near real time 
Uh, you could add additional nitrogen if you were concerned that you weren't going to have this much in your wastewater. For a municipal wastewater um, system, this will really not be a concern. Um, nitrogen in the waste that's arriving at the plant tends to be more than sufficient to meet that need. Uh, but if you were in a situation where you were receiving, I don't know, high carbon, low nitrogen waste from some kind of special specialty process, for example, or if you were, I don't know, putting this together for aquaculture and you weren't sure if um, the waste from your fish were going to have enough nitrogen, then this would be the sort of calculation that would be very informative for you. Phosphorus works in a very parallel way. Um, phosphorus demand 0 0.023 times that sludge production rate. Again, that's an easy calculation. Three, about 3.4 kilograms of phosphorus per day that'll be required. And by that same um, strategy as above, we can find a concentration of about 2.1 grams per cubic meter of phosphorus. So again, these are uh, necessary checks to make sure that the microbes who we have been assuming will flourish and consume all of that BOD, uh, we want to make sure they actually have all of the ingredients that are going to be necessary. So we'd like to have more nitrogen and more phosphorus than are shown on this slide to ensure that it's really BOD that is limiting and that gets uh, consumed to the extent possible. All right, that's N, that's P. Uh, one last thing to calculate will be the oxygen demand. Uh, so in other words, if all of this BOD is getting consumed, how much oxygen is it actually taking? Uh, we need that information so we can design properly for the aeration of the basin itself. So we can bubble enough air from the atmosphere through it to deliver the oxygen that those microbes are going to need. And again, this is a sort of an empirical um, approach. Discharge multiplied by the uh, difference in BOD concentrations times 1 minus 1.42 times the yield. And then you see that second term where we're going to add that 1.42 multiplied by the decay rate or death rate, the concentration of microbes or VSS that we have, and volume. And just to sort of put it uh, in simple terms, that first term on the right hand side, that's about the consumption of BOD in the water column. And then that second term that starts with a 1.42, that's really about the volatile suspended solids themselves. Because of course, they're going to, uh, those are microbes, they're going to die, they're going to decompose, and that decomposition will also be requiring oxygen. Um, if we're not accounting for that, we could starve the system of oxygen and actually stop it from processing BOD, which is the whole reason we're growing all these microbes in the first place. So again, um, it's a necessary calculation, but it isn't a particularly difficult one. Um, we've got all of the different information we need at this point. So you can see I've gone ahead and plugged in the discharge, the inflowing and the effluent BOD concentrations, uh, 1 minus 1.42 times the yield, and then plus that second term, 1.42 times the death rate, times the concentration we plan to keep in the aeration basin, times its volume. Uh, and what we find at the end of this calculation is that we're going to need about 381,000 grams of oxygen or 381 kilograms of oxygen per day. Uh, in most wastewater plants, you'll achieve that by taking atmospheric air, um, pressurizing it and bubbling it up through the system so that those bubbles can start to dissolve and provide that oxygen source for your microbes. Um, this is a useful step. Uh, to make sure that you are designing an aeration system that can deliver this much oxygen. So not only do we have enough BOD and enough microbes to consume it, and we've confirmed there's enough nitrogen and phosphorus so that those are sort of macronutrients won't be limiting, uh, but we need to ensure that we're providing enough oxygen. If we don't provide the oxygen here, that BOD will flow out of our system into the environment and it will get that oxygen from the water column, where it will decimate the aquatic ecosystem downstream. All right, everybody, I hope this was a helpful example. Just one more chance to see this design process and sort of work through it. Um, again, for my classes, what I am most interested in is that you can see how the physics, the chemistry, and the biology are coming together in this step, um, this secondary treatment step for our wastewater plant. Um, all of the equations that we're using here are 
essentially derived from a series of mass balances on um, water, on BOD, or substrate S, as we've been calling it, and on our microbial biomass, that's an X, that's our volatile suspended solids. So from those mass balances and the information we now understand about microbial growth and death, uh, we can put together a, a fairly complicated design problem, but ensure that the performance of the system is gonna match the goals that we have for it. All right, thanks everybody.